That's the reality, folks, is that workers will always be put in jeopardy. Our safety doesn't mean squat to the bosses or the politicians. We have to organize, to look out for one another. Which side are you on? We had some big news from UAW, uh, and there was a big announcement. We mentioned it in last week in Southern Labor. Uh, and before I tell you a little bit more about it, I do have a clip to share with you all from United Auto Workers. So if we could get that queued up, that would be great. Right here in Glendale, Kentucky, we are building the future of the auto industry. We work at Blue Oval SK. We're the workers who will build batteries before. And just like Ford workers, we are standing up for good, safe union jobs. Right now, our pay is too low. And as battery workers, we work with dangerous chemicals. Without the right safety equipment or procedures. We know it doesn't have to be this way. Just last year, right up the road, Ford workers in Louisville stood together and won a record UAW contract. A contract with life-changing raises, world-class health care, and a right to a safe job. Now here at Boss, we're joining together to win our union. To make sure every worker's voice is heard. From production to quality. From maintenance to material handling. Together we're building a new industry from the ground up. And we won't let anybody grind us down. Our work deserves fair pay, safety, and respect. Because battery workers are auto workers. And we're building a better future as United Auto Workers. All right. Yeah. Big, big announcement from UAW here in the south, uh, a little bit north of us up in Kentucky. Uh, the BOSK workers are building on the victories of UAW battery workers at Ultium Cells in Lordstown, Ohio and Spring Hill, Tennessee. Ultium is the joint venture that makes batteries for General Motors EV fleet. In June, UAW members at Ultium in Lordstown, Ohio, won a contract with the same strong standards that UAW members have at all General Motors facilities. In September, workers at Ultium's new plant in Spring Hill, Tennessee, formed their union and are now pre preparing to negotiate their union contract. Because BOSK is currently a non-union facility, workers there have pay, benefit, and safety standards much weaker than those of UAW members at Ford. Starting pay for a BOSK production worker is just $21 an hour, and compare that to UAW production workers at Ford who start at $26.32, and after three years will make over $42 an hour. So, uh, yeah, pretty... Pretty clear why workers at BOSK are organizing with UAW. They would love to see, you know, the same wages and benefits and safety standards that their colleagues in Ford uh, have already won through the UAW. So BOSK workers are joining together to ensure that they achieve UAW auto worker standards. The movement led by BOSK and Ultium workers is setting strong standards for the rapidly expanding EV battery industry. A recent study found that manufacturers have announced nearly 90,000 current or future jobs in the EV battery industry linked to more than $100 billion in investments over the last nine years. So this is a big, big industry, a growing industry, and it's really important that organized labor be there. The growing movement among non-union battery workers across the country, and especially in the South, builds off the success of the UAW stand-up strike at the Big Three and the victory by Volkswagen workers in Chattanooga, Tennessee, who became the first Southern auto workers outside the Big Three to win their union when they voted to join UAW in April. And I do recommend folks check out the coverage on labor notes uh, of this new campaign. Uh, our friend of the show, Luis Leon, you can check out his article, Kentucky Battery Plant Workers Launch Union Drive with UAW. Uh, just to quote here from the article a little bit, the Battery Park, a joint venture between Ford and South Korea's SK On, is expected to ramp up hiring to 5,000 hourly workers by 2030. It has twin battery plants, but the second one is on hold due to low demand for electric vehicles. At the first plant, workers are testing battery module packs from facilities in Georgia as the plant prepares to become fully operational next year. 
Since he started last year, Chad Johnson has seen co-workers suffer mild heart attacks and respiratory problems, apparently from exposure to chemicals. He has seen workers carried out on stretchers with broken pelvises from tripping on exposed wiring because they are working in what is still an active construction site. The organizing, quote, has moved more quickly than expected, said Johnson, a quality control technician and former UAW Local 3047 member at nearby Ford Supplier. There were originally six of us. That grew to about 15. Now there's an organizing committee of about 70. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tvlr.fm slash donate. Moving on. Governor Andy Bashir in the article says, quote, I am a pro-union governor and always will be. My hope is the companies that are involved will stay neutral and let this be a true decision of the employees. Wow. Uh, very different from what we heard from many Southern governors this year, uh, including Alabama's Governor Kay Ivey, who basically told us unions were the devil. Yankee Devils, and uh, were bad for us. Very bad for Alabama values. So uh, kudos to Governor Andy Bashir for uh, calling for neutrality. Uh, it's a welcome move. And wrapping up here with uh, the article from Labor Notes, again, this is from Luis Leon, Haley Hadfield was one of the original six workers who spoke with a UAW regional director. Then she began holding meetings in her living room. Hadfield had been a member of the Communication Workers Industrial Division, IUE CWA, for four years at General Electric, where she built appliances. She applied at Blue Oval because the company was promoting that it offered free health insurance and other perks, including cell phones and computers, plus a starting rate of 21 an hour. The company later withdrew the offer of free health care, a sore point for workers who were drawn to the job for that reason. A month in, Hadfield became concerned when the company sent new hires to train in a school infested with bats. The bat colony had roosted in the elevator shaft of this decommissioned middle school, she said, and we didn't really have much choice but to be exposed to their guano and their droppings, and it started to make a lot of people physically ill. Once they started training on-site, while the plant was still under construction, Hadfield and her co-workers really started getting to know each other and talking about their shared issues at work. Meanwhile, the safety issues or safety problems at the Blue Oval site had begun before factory workers even got there. Since construction started in 2022, the workers building the complex have been raising safety concerns, including mold and respiratory illnesses among electrical workers, the company recently quarantined a whole building, and workers say it is finally tearing out the whole HVAC for mold. One of the fears is exposure to cathode, cathode and anode pow powder. I probably mispronounced those. I'm just a simple country boy struggling with some big words. But these are hazards that can include chemical leaks, elect electric shocks, explosions, and fires. So these powders are used to make paste that is applied to different foils that we use to pull together and create our battery pouches, pouches, Hadfield explained. If you look at an Energizer battery, you'll see a plus and a minus sign on opposite sides of that battery. Within that battery itself would also be tiny little bits of cathode and anode powder. The batteries that auto workers manufacture are made of lithium ion electrical, electric chemical cells. Each cell has two electrodes, a posi positively charged containing lithium and a negatively charged, typically made of graphite. The cathode usually contains nickel, manganese, and cobalt oxides. So um, shout out to the workers in Kentucky for organizing uh, amidst these uh, safety issues, in particular false promises, uh, you know, that's the reality, folks, is that workers will always be put in jeopardy. Our safety doesn't mean squat to the bosses or the politicians. We have to organize to look out for one another. So shout out to the workers here in Kentucky organizing with UAW. And I think it's really important to see 
the Union Drive continue in this EV battery field. Uh, it's, you know, it's a growing industry, as I shared. It's going to be, you know, more and more jobs, particularly here in the South. And, you know, these companies go to the South for a reason. They go to the South because they know they can get away with lower wages. They know that the, you know, uh, politicians will be lined up against the unions. They know that they can get away with hardly any regulations, right? They can trash the environment. They don't have to worry about safety. They, that's why they come here, right? As uh, our brother Jeremy with the UAW said about Mercedes, you know, the Alabama discount. That's what they're looking for. That's why they come down to the South. And so it's really, really exciting to see UAW uh, organize these workers uh, they have a supermajority signed up, so we'll see. The company could sign right now voluntary recognition. They could go ahead and recognize them. Uh, my guess is they probably won't, and they will probably force this to an NLRB election, uh, which, you know, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Uh, hopefully the company will not commit any sort of union busting, but... Um, you know, especially with the governor speaking out. So something to keep our eye on for sure, but a big, big campaign happening here in the South. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.